Bohr. I'd like to present uh, the Learning Block 3 in our Lynx uh, presentation about warehousing operations. And <clears throat> in class the other day, we started talking about what is involved. And the basic functions in a warehouse are receiving, put away, storing, inventory control, picking, and shipping. So on this end, we have the inbound shipments that are offloaded from a truck, staged, lift trucks then put them into storage locations, be it racks or floor locations. Um, we want to keep track because warehouses can be the size of a football field or two. And we want to keep track of where everything is so that when, when it's time to go and retrieve items, we know exactly where they are and have a good idea of the quantity that we have. And then you prepare them for shipment you load them on a truck and off they go. Uh, we talked about the difference between warehouses and DCs. Um, a warehouse has more things are probably stored for a longer period of time. Uh, DC is called a distribution center and in distribution centers uh, things don't stay stored as long. They're faster moving by definition. A warehouse management system is a part of an ERP system, part of an SAP or Oracle system that specifically is designed for warehouse uh, location tracking and keeping just keeping track of where everything is and guiding people that are on the various lift trucks, be them pallet drivers or lift trucks like this where to go, where to find it, how to take things out, recording what they take out of stock, recording what they put away, recording when things get shipped. Uh, if you're looking for a career in warehousing and distribution, check out this video. So they're both, both DCs and warehouses have value-added services they provide. Uh, in one case, they could provide interim store staging location for purchased goods. They store finished products, and they might do some small kind of other activity that involves uh, adding value to the products, like kitting, um, wrapping things if it's for gift, like at an Amazon warehouse. We talked about the locations of warehouses, and oftentimes these could be the locations of this is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different Dollar Tree distribution centers. Uh, depending on the size of the company and where they're located, they'll often have one, as we said, in the Northeast, one around Atlanta, one in Texas, maybe one in Denver, the Northeast, maybe out of San Francisco for the whole Northeast, out of Los Angeles, and certainly Chicago, as we've said. Value-added services are cross-docking, marking, labeling, light final product assembly. Um, cross-docking may be carried out to sort materials intended to go to different uh, destinations. And we showed in class the other day, and as other slides will show. Um, marking and labeling is performed to satisfy unique customer requests. Maybe there's some final packaging that... Uh, a Costco may want different than Walmart, different than Target. So the basic warehouse operations we talk about, receiving, put away, storage, picking, packing, shipping. These are inbound activities, receiving and put away. Process activities inside the warehouse are storage and picking. Outbound activities are packing and shipping. Uh, and the other things that happen here is goods receipt, item storage, item retrieval, preparation for shipping. So there are transactions that happen. Transactions when you receive the goods, so it knows that it's not it's off the truck and part of the warehouse inventory now. When you put it away, it, you want to track where you stored it and how many of those items you stored in that particular location. And so that when you do retrieval, the warehouse management system can guide you where to go and pick certain items and uh, in what quantities and then can do that debit. And then preparation for shipping and when it finally ships, the 
export of the goods. The transaction that says the goods are no longer part of the warehouse are in, and are in transition to the next location, oftentimes a customer. Uh, warehousing DCs are the links between production, manufacturing, and customers. It could be a various suppliers that provide goods to your warehouse and then you ship them to the plant. Sometimes the warehouse is connected to the plant. This would be an inbound logistics system and this is a raw pack subassembly or maybe finished goods storage before more value is added to them. Outbound, you have several factories. They may feed one warehouse each. Sometimes the warehouse is connected or three, as in this picture, three plants feed two warehouses and then that those warehouses distribute the product to the market. This is a raw and pack warehouse, a raw material warehouse. This is a finished goods warehouse, sometimes also referred to as a distribution center. Here is the activities. We've talked about receiving, so you schedule the carrier when they're going to come. Even though you might have 40 dock doors, uh, they can't just show up whenever they want. You have to schedule, if you have a very productive warehouse, you have to schedule them in so that they can actually um, make sure that there's a dock door and a crew ready to unload the truck. Uh, you want to inspect any of the product for damage, compare what you've received to the purchase order and the shipping documents, and then um, send the trucker away and, and transact those products into your warehouse. You put them away, you want to identify the product, identify the storage location, move the product, update your records, in storage, you just want to keep track of where they are and know how much space they've taken up. When you're picking for an order, it tells you where to go and pick it up. And you could walk and pick, which means that you're picking single cases, but batch picking might be with a lift truck or a pallet jack that picks up an entire pallet. And then shipping preparation, you may have to package it further you may have to add some labeling. You may have to stage it in front of a dock door where the truck will come. And if the truck is going to multiple locations, you want to stage the product and, and goods by order so that the, the first stop is the last thing you put on a truck and the last stop is the first thing you put on a truck. And then you ship it. You schedule a carrier again. They load the vehicle. You print and give them the bill of lading, which is uh, showing what they're carrying, and update your records to show that the goods have been transferred out of your warehouse and are now in transit. So conventional warehouse resetters used by all kinds of businesses and store and manage products. Uh, warehouses may be simple or, or quite sophisticated. Uh, sophisticated warehouse barcodes for each pallet, automated storage retrieving, efficient warehouse and inventory management, computer systems, and uh, you know you have rack storage. You may have automated conveyors that move individual cases around. There's almost no limit uh, to the application that you can have in a warehouse. A simple warehouse is where everything is stored on the floor, and you use pallet jacks, which have no that can carry, they, they can lift pallets a little bit and tote them away, but it does not, um, cannot put them in higher storage locations. So warehouses may store equipment, they may store raw materials, excess or obsolete inventory, which is the cholesterol in the inventory system that we talk about, and also inventory that's work in process. At a distribution center, and here's a schematic of one, this is a retail distribution, distributes goods to retail stores. Order fulfillment center distributes goods directly to customers, that's what Amazon usually has. Crosstalk facility stores few or no products and is used to better match shipments to destinations. You can watch this video, it's a 2012 video of Amazon. It's completely outdated as Amazon has probably redesigned their warehousing operations twice. But you have a truck unloading material and you have the receipt of the merchandise 
and this is the merchandise receiving area and it's stored in and this is really small storage area but usually it's much larger and then you have staging for shipping you may have conveyors because you're not doing it on full pallets like like you see here but uh, if you could ship on full pallets from there but you might do some sorting and merchandise sorting and storage area and then you may ship from the same location so it's just a little schematic of that uh, differentiating warehouses and distribution centers both provide interim st staging and storage for purchased goods storage of products that have been assembled or manufactured or basic functionality for the receipt of goods storage retrieval preparation for shipment here they say a dc normally distributes goods to retail store an order fulfillment center commonly distributes goods to consumers and cross dock facility stores no products and at, at, at least for any significant length of time. I think I gave you a rule of thumb 24 to 48 hours. Um, so warehouses receive goods from manufacturing facilities and DCs receive goods from warehouses and process them and ship them to stores or homes. Here's a better picture of what warehouses could look like. In both these warehouses, you see there, this one only has four doors. This one has probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven doors. And the same doors are used from shipping and receiving. Uh, this is more common where the doors are on one side. This would be a warehouse kind of facility. You can see the rack storage and they show they're wide enough for lift trucks to maneuver around in. They don't show how high the storage is, but when loads are unloaded, they're put right here. And when loads are prepared for shipping, they're also put in the same place. And here you have an area for returns and reprocessing. You have an area to recharge the batteries on the lift trucks and maybe do some light maintenance. They're not showing any office here, but there obviously has to be an office in these warehouses. And you would put your most popular items here, your BSKUs here, and your CSKUs around. This is pallet racking and pick sorting, and this is just pallet racking. So maybe this is where they do case picking. This is where they do pallet picking. Now, here's, this one is a much more um, sophisticated. It has a light assembly line in it, but it still has raw materials, components, and storage. And sometimes there's full containers stored in the warehouse itself and empty container storage area. And then maybe if it's a raw material, this feeds an assembly line which then you have the finished goods and the finished goods are shipped out. So here's, those are two examples of warehouses. Here's another view that's more schematic and you can actually see one, two, three, four, five, six high racks. And they're usually single or double deep. They're called selective racks. Here you have deeper storage but you would use those for maybe your fastest moving products because while you can store more in, in, in a square per square foot in, in these drive-in kind of racks, they're not the most efficient because of something called, you can't store lots of different products. It's better to store uh, one or two products in these kinds of things that are the fast movers. Then you would have pallet put away and pallet picking here you would have case picking here, which would assemble into an order. And my phone is ringing. We'll ignore that. And you have your offices here. You have, I'm not sure what this is because you can't just tell from the schematic without a label on it. But this is, uh, if you're building a new warehouse and you have a sophisticated company, you know, a, a consulting company help you with the design and the layout, they will provide this kind of diagram for you. A cross-docking facilities we talk about, one side trucks come, 
they all have the same product. It's all orange things here, all green things, all or blue things, all green things. And they're unloaded from the truck and they're sorted so that you can send a mixture of green, orange, and blue things. So if this is the truck from Kellogg coming to a Walmart warehouse, one from Procter & Gamble, and it has all full of Rice Krispies, and this one's all full of some sort of uh, shampoo, and this one's all full of um, uh, some sort of consumer electronics, and you're going to ship these three things to different Wal Walmart stores, you would not be sending full truckloads to those stores, but a mixture of the various products. So this is a big open area, usually not much rack storing. Everything is stored on the floor and sorted out and arranged to be shipped out, like I said, between 24 and 48 hours max. The warehouse management system is an add-on to most ERP systems. Uh, you can buy them from Walmart and Oracle or third parties. Uh, they all use barcode scanners and sometimes RFIDs. It's really a sophisticated computer software, and it can show you, it can schedule the, the, the deliveries of trucks to your warehouse. It can schedule the outbound shipments and uh, of trucks to your warehouse, and it, it records using a handheld barcode reader uh, that the lift truck or pallet jack operator would use to shoot um, the barcodes that are on the pallets or the boxes that you're putting away so that and each storage location has a barcode reader so I shoot here I have this ABC product and I'm putting it in storage location one two three so I shoot the product I enter how many there are I also then shoot the storage location I'm putting that in and I hit another button and that transaction says I have taken this product from offloaded off a truck and I've put it away in this storage location. Vice versa, when you're told to go pick something, you can go and pick it. You scan the storage location, you scan the pallet barcode or the box, the carton barcodes, and you, you note how many you've taken from that location. And then you hit a transaction, and now that good is assigned to you, and you drop it off at a dock bay where it will be loaded on a truck, you hit another button and it says, okay, it's stage ready for loading. Um, you would think that one lift truck driver kind of prepares the load for an entire truck, but it, warehouse management systems are more efficient than that. They will uh, say, okay, you're picking now, go to this storage location and pick a pallet, two pallets that will be taken to storage location, to loading dock two for shipment. And then on your way back, if your next job is to take something that was just been offloaded at loading dock four and take it to this storage location. After that, pick something else up and take it to storage dock, or loading dock seven for an outbound shipment. And that way you're not, if you only did one load, either put away or preparing a load for a truck, half your motion would be empty. You'd be going to the racks and putting something away, coming back empty to pick up the next thing to put away. So the warehouse management system makes sure that you utilize all of your lift trucks and pallet jacks effectively. It also generates all the paperwork necessary uh, for shipping and receiving documents, uh, order processing. It communicates with the ERP system to say the order has been loaded, the truck has left, uh, is sealed, it's no longer in our inventory. It's in transit inventory that may belong to you or it may belong to the receiving party. And off it goes. And it notes the time that it was loaded and the door was closed. And that starts the clock then on in transit. And probably the warehouse management system then transfers that information to the transportation management system, which takes over monitoring everything that happens there. The warehouse management system uh, helps you improve warehouse efficiency by monitoring a series of metrics and key indicators that tell you how you're doing. Um, so one of the things you look at is task management, optimizing labor and product flow. You talk about inventory tracking, maintaining your inventory levels. In lull times in the warehouse, it will have 
operators of lift trucks and pallet jacks go to various locations and just do a cycle inventory count. So it keeps an ongoing inventory count so you don't have to spend as much time doing a full inventory once or twice a year. It generates, re it tracks all kinds of metrics and generates reports to let you know the productivity of all the workers, all the operations, how your processes are running. Um, it gives you management information and decision support and prepares all the necessary paperwork for transportation, tracking, customer service, and order management. Uh, unique customer requests. Um, like there are companies like uh, Granger, which is basically a giant warehouse of industrial goods <clears throat> that smaller companies buy. They have unique marketing and labeling uh, requirements on all products that are shipped to them. I guess Dell has the same kind of thing. So the final product assembly occurs when the customer options are combined to fulfill their specific requirements. So you might create a new pallet and you might have to label that pallet according to the customer that it's being sent to. This would also be hap um, managed by the warehouse management system. We've talked about um, cross docking and you know here's just another example of it. Here we have one, two, three, four homogeneous products or uh, identical products coming in in four different trucks, probably from different companies. You receive it, you sort it, you stage it here, you put it on a truck so you see it's all mixed up how it goes. So uh, before cross-docking, every supplier had to ship less than full truckloads to the warehouse. Now they can ship full, tr uh, and that's more expensive, less than truckload loads uh, that make multiple stops is more expensive than sending a full truckload of, of items to one warehouse. And so you have full truckload in and full truckload out, which is exactly what Walmart would like to do. So, and if we're talking about Walmart, who's the king of cross docking, um, it's more than four trucks coming in. It's probably 40 trucks coming in and sorting all their, their high selling products and then shipping them directly to the store in full. I mean, so you can take, you're saving a lot of time and you're saving a lot of money by doing it this way. So you have reduced operating costs, greater supply chain responsiveness, reduced inventory levels, increased throughput. Throughput is the amount of goods into a warehouse and the amount of goods out of a warehouse. Oops, I'm sorry about that. Um, you have reduced product obsolescence because the product is not sitting in a warehouse. It's sent right to a store. Um, probably the less product isn't handled as much, so you have reduced damage, reduced transit times, faster time to market, and uh, theoretically quicker cash flow if Walmart pays you on a, on a regular basis. Here's all of the activities associated with receiving. And a specific time and date is scheduled for carriers to unload. Once the carriers have arrived, trailers or containers must be, success, must be successfully backed into specific loading or unloading bays. Um, sometimes the bay may be full. It's like your airplane lands, but there's no gates. It has to, the truck may have to idle in a um, staging area. In receiving process, product is moved from the transportation vehicle into the warehouse. Uh, if you do this with lift trucks on full pallets, like this picture shows here, you can unload a truck probably in 20 minutes. If uh, it's done by cases and human beings, even though if you might put a conveyor, a portable conveyor in there, it could take an hour or hour, hour to two hours to unload. The shipping documentation and paperwork is transferred and the products are inspected for damage and make sure that what's on the shipping documents are what you've received. If it's not right, um, you can send the discrepancies back or you can then just rectify it via computer with the person, with the company that sent it to you. After the entire loads have been unloaded, any discrepancies that are noted, they're noted on the paper, but I said also electronically transmitted. Uh, sometimes freshly unloaded products must be sent out immediately without going to storage. So even a, a regular warehouse could do a cross dock 
In this case, products are staged and shipped promptly. Otherwise, the products being stored for a later ship date are stored in the warehouse racking locations. The common equipment, a pallet jack, which is hand operated, it can be mechanized as well. Uh, you have a lift truck. Notice the small wheels. We talked about how important a floor was in a warehouse, how smooth it has to be. These things weigh, weigh tons. They have to be counterbalanced heavily because they're lifting up tons of products, maybe up to six storage locations. Uh, you have pallets. You have ramps that go when the truck pulls into the dock. There's usually a locking mechanism down here so that the truck can't be pushed away. Uh, there have been instances of these things falling if, if there's a gap and damaging uh, both trailer, um, the lift trucks, and causing human injury, which no one wants. We've talked about warehouse management systems, um, and it automates all of the, the basic items we talked about. It's Wi-Fi based. It's a barcode system. It reads and stores put away. This is a device that reads. It's almost like the uh, scanner in a grocery store, except portable. So mobile handheld devices. So you can see how this works. Latest technology includes RFID. RFID tags are small, and they use the same principle as your iPass uses. They're, they're not powered, and uh, when they pass through a reader, they're detected, and, it's just, and it will record the barcode as it passes through a reader, so then you could actually save time. Um, it's not clear. This was supposed to be the big promise of the future. I'm not actually certain how much usage it's getting, but people still talk about it all the time. The paperwork, you have a packing list, a detailed contents of the shipping container, uh, and lists, items and shipments, item codes, st or stock keeping units, which we talked about, SKUs. Description of the items, the quantity that were in there, and any additional information from the items. as required for every commercial shipment. A bill of lading is a contract between the carrier and the shipper for the transportation. So if I'm shipping something from our warehouse, the carrier is a truck. They have to carry a bill of lading and a packing slip. Uh, receipt issued by the carrier to a shipper for the goods received for transportation. Evidence of title to the goods in such case. Because we want to keep track of, you know, if you're shipping a full truckload of even something like coffee, it's thousands, tens of thousands of dollars of coffee in the truck. And you want to make sure that you've got the proper paperwork and you're you're doing the right accounting of this. So origin of the freight, destination of the freight, what and how much is being shipped, who pays, who pays, is it prepaid by the shipper, is it paid by the receiver. Uh, shipper signs the freight that was shipped in good order, the carrier signs it was received in a good order, and the receiver signs that the goods was received in good order. And a lot of this is moving more and more electronically, even though there's still a lot of paper floating around in this part of the business. So we've talked about that. Inspecting and verifying a delivery is the final step in receiving. Once the paperwork is received and a product's unloaded, the next step is to inspect the goods for signs of damage, like crushed, torn, broken, cartons, missing product. Uh, things uh, disappear in shipping um, unbelievably or you think there's, they said they were shipped from the shipper and when the receiving party gets it, there's less than that was on the list. It's called shrinkage. Sometimes it's theft, sometimes it's ineptitude, uh, but these things happen all the time. So you don't want to pay for damaged or miss missing goods. Um, the receiving party has the same accounting principles they're trying to adhere to as the shipping party does. Storage. So things are put away and are stored in various kinds of ways. Here is a picture of pallet storage. And it looks like big things that are seem to be straddling two pallets. I don't know exactly what that is but uh, or, or what kind of equipment they need to lift that, but it's not a standard size. Here's something like in an Amazon warehouse, uh, probably from the 2012 video, unlike where they're stored now, all the different little items, let's say uh, stationary products um, and things that you order from Amazon would be located in these kinds of storage 
and people would go up and down these aisles selecting items, shooting the barcodes. You can see underneath each thing there's a barcode. You can see here there's a small barcode or there's a small label. That's probably a barcode for the storage location. If you notice, the box or the pallets do not have anything on it. So I'm assuming these are all the same items that are stored here. Uh, storage strategy, you want to have minimal handling, minimum number of movements. Movements cost money, they cost time, and nothing good happens to a product when it's being moved. The bad things can happen to a product being moved. You can be damaged, it can be dropped, it can be destroyed. Uh, product demand, item demand determines its handling and placement in the warehouse. We talked about that ABC classification of items, and you want your eight items, your fast movers, where you have the least amount of movement from the dock doors. And your B items, which are the slower movers, in the next area of the warehouse that are a little bit further away. And then the furthest from the dock doors would be your items that are, are the slower movers, your C items. Um, individual pieces or cases can be stored in bins or containers to facilitate barcode, fixed and flexible storage operations. Otherwise, it, in rack storage, you um, creates a safe, organized, clean workspace and provides protection for products when they're in storage. Racks also make excellent use of overhead space and they uh, have to be sized for the amount of weight they'll be carrying. They have to be sized for the seismic activity in the area. Um, a, a, an area that has higher seismic activity, like in California, their racking specifications are going to be different than uh, a warehouse that's in Chicago where you not, don't have the frequency of seismic activity and earthquakes as you would have there. Uh, labeling and storage location. So you want to label both the pallets and the storage location. Storage labels, also called uh, license plates sometimes, are applied to products that have been successfully received in the warehouse. Actually, they usually arrive with this on it so that you don't have to put it on because that would be a wasted activity. They're usually put on at the point of shipment. The label is generated by the WMS, and if you have a, an unlabeled product, you definitely have to do that for yourself. And it, so it has a barcode. It has the number underneath it in case you can't read the barcode. It tells you what it is. It tells you the net uh, weight, and it tells you what it is. Um, you know, so this is yellow cheddar, and it has to be. It has an expiration date on it, so it has to be shipped. It has to be sold by the second of May, 2012, and the plant number that it came from, or maybe the plant number of your warehouse is number 142. The order process: an order is placed, the order is processed. We'll talk more about order processing later. In the warehouse, the order is picked. The order is packed. The order is sorted. And it goes to the end consumer directly, to a delivery station, to a pickup location, and eventually to the end customer. And this would be like maybe an Amazon kind of uh, transmission of goods. Uh, if it's a good going from our warehouse uh, to, of a consumer goods company to a Walmart or Target or Costco, it would be loaded onto a truck and delivered to their, their end customer would be their warehouse. So it really depends on the nature of the product being shipped, how it works. The order process is not finished though, they've left something out. When the end customer gets it, there's a receipt of the goods that then closes the order out. And if the order hasn't been prepaid, the billing process, the invoicing process starts. Uh, if you want to look at how Zappos, which is bought by Amazon, does it with their online uh, shoe store. And you can look at at 1030 in the morning, an order is placed. The order is received at the warehouse. The order is picked and packed. The order is updated. And at 2.30 a.m., the order is... The updated order status and tracking number is assigned. UPS picks it up, goes to a UPS shipping center. It leaves the Louisville airport, arrives in Orlando, and is delivered to someone's house by 11.15 the next morning. 
it's amazing that we can that this how how this is done these days. Order picking when orders. Um, they must go through, when orders are received, they must go through a fulfillment process. Products must be located and brought out of storage location to the staging area. In larger warehouses, WMS includes integrated handheld barcode scanners where pickers use the scanners by scanning the license plate either on the storage location or the pallet, entering the quantity scan scanning locations at each point. Of the picking process, orders are then processed on computers. Inventory is also managed in this manner. As pickers scan the orders for shipping, the inventory of a specific SKU is automatically reduced by that amount. So the goal of order picking is to be as efficient as possible by saving time. As we have mentioned in class before, the pickers used to go to the storage locations. Now in modern Amazon warehouses, the storage locations are move to the picker uh, by using robotic pallet, um, robotic pallets, basically. There are little robot drives underneath the pallet, lifts it up, and it's a special pallet design, not the regular size that you would use for groceries, and delivers it to where a picker is standing. It actually lights up the thing he's supposed to pick up. He takes it out and notes that he took it, and the inventory is deleted from storage, and now it's being in process uh, for transit. Order picking, there's so many different types. There's order picking, locating and retrieving products to prepare for a shipment. Like we said, the goal is to be as accurate and efficient as possible. You can pick it manually. Workers pick, pickers work around the entire warehouse until one order is complete and then bring the complete order to the shipping and staging area. Batch picking orders focus on picking a batch of items for several different orders, or zone picking, where the warehouse is divided into zone pickers assigned to that zone pick the items in their zone for any order. Uh, there's voice picking and pick by light. So if you see, like pick by light is more. The voice picking will say voice is activated is a method of picking orders using the above method. Employees listen to others on headsets to determine which items and which quantities are needed for the order, and the benefit is faster picking times. I don't know how much this is used. Pick to light seems to be much more popular, at least in my experience, where uh, not only is the storage location noted, but it shows you, it lights up to say, pick this and put it in, you know, for if when you're in the area, it senses that you're there, and will then... Uh, you, it says take two of those items, you take two of those items, put it in the carton that's going to be shipped, and then uh, go on to your next thing. And sometimes these things are on carousels and can move around, which is, again, you don't want the person running around as much if it can be automated. Uh, processing orders, here's another schematic of that, uh, a flowchart, and you can just follow it through. Customer places a purchase order. And it comes in as a sales order. And it's the, the point of uh, pick, pick it, order it, or produce it. So if so you have to pick it, you pick the items. The items are boxed. The items are create a shipping slip and invoice and ship to the customer. If you have to order the items, determine the order of the quantity, create the purchase order. Then when you receive those items, uh, you can box them and ship them, or if they have to be assembled, uh, then you box it and ship it. Or if you produce, or if it's a manufactured item that has to be produced, determine the quantity, create a work order, assemble or manufacture the items, then you box it and ship it. So that's another way of looking at order processing. Uh, if you look at processing orders at the Home Depot Locust Grove, Georgia facility, they have a variety of different kind of racking because they have so many different products there. They have bulk floor storage, non-conveyable packing, a selective racking that's one or two deep bulk floor storage, carton flow module where individual cartons may be on conveyors. Uh, you have carton flow. All of this carton flow comes to this kind of area where it's 
shipping and packing order and the pick station. Uh, it's it's a, quite a facility. Take a look at the video. You'll learn something from that. Uh, shipment overview. Shipping is the last step. So it's the last opportunity to catch and correct any errors, add or subtract last minute changes, and verify that orders are as correct as can be. In preparing the order for shipment, personnel should keep in mind specific product characteristics that may impact their packing or shipping. Fragile items, carrier specific requirements, does it have to be refrigerated? Are you shipping fruits and vegetables? Safeguards for hazardous materials. Um, liquids and chemicals may require special trucks of, of bulk containers like tanker trucks. Uh, specific order characteristics that may impact packaging or carrier choice. The physical side of the order, a single paperback novel versus a case of textbooks versus a pallet of textbooks. Is the order expedited? Boxes not to exceed 50 pounds. Is it a palletized order? All of those things play into account. Preparation for shipment. So you can watch planes, trains, and artifacts. A shipping odyssey. It's a TED, uh, it's a TED speech. Um, but if you offer free shipping, you're going to probably send it by ground and by truck. Uh, if it's a minimum required, or if you have flat shipping or a limited time offer, or offer free returns, these are all big box shipping cost strategies. So what's the size of the order? What's the transportation mode? Carrier requirements? product requirements. All of my stuff that I ever shipped uh, in consumer goods was either done by truck, ocean carrier, sometimes rail. Uh, air was used only in expedited orders and only if we absolutely positively had to. Uh, another company like Zara will ship everything by air because they're concerned with reducing the amount of inventory. So safety and cleanliness. Staging area is the most dangerous area of the warehouse. Everyone moves as rapidly as possible. Lighting may be poor or inconsistent. I think that's an old thing. Now any modern warehouse should have the proper lighting available everywhere. In fact, you can have portable lights light up the inside of a, a, a shipping container. Uh, products may be staged and block sight lines. Forklifts and other equipment rush back and forth. Large trailers move in and out. Uh, the number of injuries we've seen happen from trucks moving in and out. People actually get hit by trucks, sometimes killed. Uh, but people track that and want to reduce, you know, reduce any injuries and any uh, life loss injuries. So I would say that most companies now, these are rare occurrences, but they're still uh, lift trucks and heavy equipment moving around. Injuries and death do happen occasionally. Uh, you want to make sure that safety and cleanliness are critical. If you're supposed to block the wheels of the truck so they can't roll, you got to make sure that's done. You've got to make sure that there's no debris that people can slip on or fall. Uh, and there's a lot of room for dunnage, uh, packaging materials to, to litter the area if you're not careful. Uh, and you want to stabilize and tidy up the shipments to protect both the goods and the people handling it. So there's a lot of shrink wrapping, banding, padding, and organized loading. It's, it's quite a thing to see how the trucks are loaded. We've talked about the shipment documentation, which is the bill of lading, travels with the shipment. It's a contract. A specific set of goods have been received by a specific carrier as cargo to be delivered to a specific location. That's the governing document. The shipping manufacturer the manifest, I'm sorry, the packing list or the way bill, all the same list. Items document, itemized document listing the complete inventory of the load, more detailed than the bill of lading. Uh, tracking different transportation methods, we use different tracking methods, but now with GPS, uh, most things are trackable. And you can see when your load is coming. You can see if your load is delayed. You can see if the truck driver has stopped off to see his girlfriend on the way to deliver your goods. And uh, you and the same thing applies for, obviously, airplanes, rail, and ocean transportation. We've talked about the shipping paperwork. No need to go over that again. 
Here's an example of a bill of lading. It's proof of an agreement between companies responsible for shipping goods and companies carrying the goods, generated by shippers or third-party logistics companies. 3PL is a term for third-party logistics. Uh, freight bills or freight invoices are distinct from bills of lading and cannot be used as evidence in any potential dispute. A bill of lading can be used in a court of law. This is a legal document that a, a shipper carries with them. So here's a summary. Warehouses in DC serve as a key supply chain point between production and customers. So warehouses receive, store, move goods. Efficient management is critical because it's a cost center. And the whole point is minimizing the cost. So you want to run it as effectively and as efficiently as possible. So this learning block outlined the typical warehouse management and operations. Uh, I don't expect you to remember all of it, but that is in a, uh, you've gotten a, a drink from a fire hose on how warehouse management works. Next thing we'll cover is inventory overview. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, we'll talk again soon.